Hey, welcome back to the homestead. It's uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Um, we're just going to go through a few things we've got on the agenda this weekend. Um, and we're going to be trying to launch videos every weekend. Um, so kind of more on a little bit of a schedule. Um, the days are so short, it's hard to do stuff Monday through Friday, but uh, we'll definitely try and get one per weekend out. Um, so first we're going to check out our winter garden. Um, and we're going to first show you um, the fall garden, what's left over of that. So this was um, green beans, and there's actually a volunteer potato plant, which is kind of cool, um, that we must have missed at the harvest. So this is a row of green beans. We need to harvest these. We've actually eaten some of them already, and they taste pretty darn good. Um, so we're gonna begin harvesting these and pull those. Then we have the peas over here. These are looking good. We get pods forming and peas inside of them, so we'll be able to harvest and eat those soon. Um, then we've added up the middle of this some winter crops. This is all broccoli going up the middle because this stuff will be pulled out soon so they'll have a lot of room. Um, then we're over to the sweet and peas, um, which were like the uh, snap peas, like sugar snap peas. And uh, these were really good, um, but they didn't give much so it was a little late in the season for them. There's a couple here. So we'll be harvesting these and just pulling those soon. Um, but I'll definitely grow those again. Those tasted great. And then more of these Lincoln peas over there. Um, you see the pods, so these will start going. So um, it was probably late in the season to do some of this stuff, but the Lincoln peas, I think they'll be okay. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the winter stuff. So this is all onions here. Onions, this whole half of this bed. And there's another volunteer potato. <laughs> That's kind of cool, we'll see what happens with those. Um, I was just talking to a farmer friend of mine in the area and he said around here um, Especially because the microclimate where we're, where exactly where I live on this part of this hill gets a lot of Sun and heat that he said you can actually start potatoes like in a few weeks um, And they just won't go super fast, but they'll get going and then as spring comes you can harvest your first batch So we'll probably do that um, So then this is all garlic different types of garlic um, then we'll move over this section um, we've got this is mostly cabbage um, the two end are some leftover kales um, and then we have more cabbage on the other side so this is pretty much just all cabbage and then purple cabbage here so a couple different types and then um, some herbs here some uh, thyme and some cilantro um, now I'm just gonna be honest with you guys we did not start this from seeds which is kind of sad but uh, we just didn't put it on the agenda and we never got around to it and then we just decided we just want to get this thing going so we didn't didn't do it from seeds but hopefully next time we will um, so then we come over to this whole side and this is a bunch of kale here um, actually no this is broccoli <laughs> This is all broccoli coming through here. And then this is all kale. Um, so there's two kales going from before and we really need to start eating it and using it. We're gonna end up with a lot of kale. Um, crazy amount of kale, but we'll eat it, we'll share it too. So always share your crops or sell it or whatever. Um, and then we've got, this is more broccoli, I believe. And then we got our, um, cherry tomatoes from summer left over they're still kicking so that's cool that other bed over there is empty um, that's the one that had a lot of gopher problems so we got to fix that um, and then we'll get that up probably in the spring Go over here. Uh, a couple of extra I do the, believe those are cabbage that we ran out of room in the other bed so that's all that's in here uh, this kind of has a gopher problem too check that out and this has gopher wire, so they snuck in somehow. They're sneaky little guys. Um, then we got some uh, celery here and cauliflower. And that about rounds out the winter garden. So uh, yeah, we'll stay tuned and we'll see how this stuff turns out. But we're very excited. This is all stuff that we love to eat, um, especially broccoli. We eat that a ton around here. So. Yeah, that's that's the winter garden. Now we're gonna check out some other stuff. Um, 
let's see, we're gonna go over to the orchard real quick. I wanna update you guys on something. All right, so now we're down in the orchard, and uh, you may remember two videos ago in the orchard tour, I talked about the ants coming back on the trees and the solution for that being Tanglefoot. So I got some of those on already, um, and I'm gonna show you all how to do one here. Um, so you need three things. You need your Tanglefoot paper, um, which comes in a roll. Uh, I forgot exactly what it's called, but you could probably Tanglefoot barrier, I think. And then your Tanglefoot uh, goop, whatever you wanna call that, and some tape. Um, so right here, this one doesn't have any ants currently, but I just wanna set it up so that if they come back, they won't have any luck. Okay, so the first thing we do is take our Tanglefoot paper, wrap it around the trunk, nice and tight, and then tape that on like this. Oh, come on, don't do it to me. There we go. Okay, All right, now. so that's on. And next, it's as simple as this. We get our Tanglefoot goop. Get a little finger full. You can use a stick or a spatula or whatever. I'm just gonna do it that way. And you just wrap it around. And don't go too crazy with it because if you put too much on, it can drip down and coat the whole trunk and get gross. Um, see, so that's, oh, that's almost overkill. So that's it, it's that simple. Um, I wish I did this way earlier in the season, but we didn't have the supplies on hand um, and we just let it get away from us. So doing this at the beginning of the season when the ants first showed up would have saved me so much headache and at least uh, like two or three of my trees would just look so much better now. Um, so lesson learned with pests, always act quick. All right, so now we're gonna head over to the compost piles inside the chicken run and making some improvements there and some changes. So uh, we'll head over and check that out. All right, so yeah, we're in the compost area now. And uh, before we uh, see what exactly I'm gonna be doing with this compost, we're gonna go ahead and make an addition. Um, so we're gonna add it on to this whole system. So let me snap my finger and we'll see what we got. And there it is. So I've gone ahead and added a bay to this whole system. So let's walk up and take a closer look. So this is the new bay here. Um, and I've lined it with some landscape cloth and I'll show you why in just a few minutes here. Um, but let's come back over here. So this is our existing pile. Um, it's doing pretty good, it's breaking down. I just added a lot of carbon today though with uh, some of these corn husks and stalks and uh, I think there were some leaves we threw in there. Then this is the uh, chicken manure. Um, so that's the chicken manure in the uh, uh, hemp shaving beddings. Um, so my plan here today is to turn this pile over into here. And that's going to finish out in here um, so that I can get a new pile going and let this one hopefully start finishing up for uh, use for spring. Hopefully it'll be done by then. Um, so I don't want to add too much new stuff to it. I just want to let what's in there break down. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that over into this bay. And what I'm going to do is also add maybe half of this chicken manure because this will really speed up the process and help it um, heat up and break down. Um, so that's the plan. You'll notice I have strings across here. Um, I just didn't want the chickens jumping in there and making a big mess um, as far as like kicking it all around. And they can actually kick it out of the container and just mess it up. So I figure, and there's, you know, it's manure. They don't really need to be in there. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get moving on that. Okay, so first I'm dumping some buckets full of chicken manure into the bottom, get a good base of nitrogen down there.
right, so that's the first turnover. And a lot of the stuff is breaking down really well, but we do have big stuff like these corn stalks that are going pretty slow. Um, so yeah, that's why I wanted to do this. Get some chicken manure in the bottom, put some of this in, and then another layer of the chicken manure and just layer it in, and hopefully that'll speed up the stalks. All right, so another layer on top of that. Another scoop. All right, and now back to forking. So this manure in here, it should kind of turbocharge the process to speed up the breakdown of this stuff. I've actually uncovered uh, what seems to be a rat's nest in here. So they were living like deep in the middle of this thing. Let's see if I can find them again. Come on out. Here they are. Found the rat family. There's some little rat pups squeaking. And there's the mama. See her? Oh, she's trying to make a run for it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this part off, but these folks, these poor guys are gonna end up compost. This pile's growing pretty quick. You know, this might be a little soon to turn it, or at least to turn it over here. I'm not really sure, but I'm just gonna see what happens. And hopefully adding all the chicken manure will really speed things up. Okay, so that whole pile is transferred over. See, that's now empty. So yeah, this is pretty nice. This is like three, three and a half feet tall. Um, a lot of the stuff in there is broken down already, but a lot of stuff's going slow, like these corn stalks. Um, so I don't anticipate those will break down anytime soon, but hopefully this could speed it up. So now I'm gonna dump some more of that manure on here and then we're gonna wrap it up. And yeah, this will be the start of my next pile so that I can just kind of let this one sit and decompose and get another one started so I've got a couple batches running at a time. Okay, so there it is. I've coated the whole thing with more of that chicken manure. I've got it kind of contained down there at the bottom with the fabric. Now I'm just gonna wrap the fabric over like this. <clears throat> Trying to breathe in more of this dust. And that's pretty much it. So that cloth will help it heat up. Help everything break down, it'll heat it up. Hopefully uh, keep moisture in. So I'm gonna go ahead and water it down and then cover it and be good. All right, so I'm pull that back. Give it a nice soaking. Okay, so watering that kind of washed off that top layer of manure, so I've got like a manure slurry. <laughs> I put a bunch of water in, so I'm gonna top it off on the top. Just want it to have a cap of manure. There we go. Perfect. There we go. I'm just gonna wrap this up top.
All right, so there you have it. It's all tarped in and tucked in. Hopefully this will go hot and break down quick. I'm gonna try to pick up a, a uh, compost thermometer and check the temp on it. So then there's our other bay ready to start a new batch. And then back to the chicken manure, I've saved about mm, roughly half of it, maybe a little more. Start the next batch, turbocharge the next batch of compost. Well, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can follow along on this compost adventure and see how this turns out. Um, drop a thumbs up on the video and a comment as well. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.